everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk. My name is John, and today here on the channel, we're going to be talking about 1982's First Blood. And it's 4K Blu-ray that came out in 2018 from Studio Canal and Lionsgate. And this film is directed by Ted Kotchoff, and it stars Sylvester Stallone, who also co-wrote this film. And it also stars Brian Dennehy and Richard Crenna. And this is the first film in the Rambo franchise, the first time Sylvester Stallone ever put on the headband and whipped out the knife. And back in 1982, Sylvester Stallone needed a hit that wasn't called Rocky. He really only was known for the Rocky franchise. He really hadn't had much success other than that. And he was really attracted to this character. He wasn't initially, but eventually he came around. He was interested in the story of a Vietnam veteran coming back not being able to blend back into society, being treated terribly just by everybody here in America. And that's one black eye on America's history is how we treated our Vietnam veterans coming back from the Vietnam War. Most of them who were drafted there to do the job, but people protested the war so much that they protested the veterans coming back and they just got a raw deal. They just could not blend back into society. They were haunted by what they saw there. And one of those people, obviously a fake character, but based on many veterans coming back, but this one is an over-the-top character played by Sylvester Stallone, and his name is John J. Rambo. Rambo. John J.? And he's having a real tough go of it. He's a Green Beret. He's just walking through town trying to find one of his old GI buddies who he was in the war with. And he finds out that not only is that guy not there, but he's since passed away from cancer. And obviously now he's all heartbroken because that was the last guy from his battalion that was left. So now he's just walking back and Brian Dennehy's sheriff sees him walking, offers him a ride, but he starts to be a bit of a dick. He's like, you know, we don't really want any trouble around here. We don't want any drifters dirtying up the town. Meanwhile, this guy fought for you to have that freedom. So he just starts being a dick to him. And of course, he pushes Rambo just a little too far. So now Rambo starts to rebel. He's going to get his meal that he wanted to get. But Brian Dennehy is not having this. And him and his other fellow sheriffs, one of them who was played by a very young David Caruso, who many people might know from NYPD Blue, but I'll always remember him from The King of New York, where he's fantastic in that movie. All these deputies really push him too hard, and then he finally just breaks out, runs into the woods. Now they're on the hunt for him. And they have to call in his leader, Colonel Troutman, basically this guy's father. God didn't make Rambo. I made him. You know, he made him who he is. He made him this killing machine. That's all he was there to do. This is really the first time in film, you know, we would see that kind of character arc. Mainly the John Wick films is what people know this kind of arc nowadays. A character who we only see initially as just a regular person. You know, we just see this guy as a regular army guy who's just kind of losing his mind. But then, then Colonel Troutman comes in and he's like, I'm not here to protect him from you. I'm here to protect you from him because all this guy knows how to do is kill. And that's the one good thing he's good at. And he knows it and he's going to be coming for your next. And I'm here to save that. So you should be very thankful. And he's trying to reel in Rambo. And, you know, of course, they manipulated Rambo in the Vietnam War. And they're calling that out here in the movie. That's one thing that Brian Dennehy's character is calling out is the fact that, like, you're just here to protect yourself, Colonel Troutman, because you know that you created this monster. And if he wipes out this whole town, that's your ass. And he's not wrong for that. And every character in this movie, Brian Dennehy, his Sheriff Teasel, Colonel Troutman, and even Rambo, none of them are heroes. They're all operating in that gray area. They all think that what they're doing is the right thing. The thing is with Teasel is that all of this could be avoided, but he's letting his ego get the best of him. He got embarrassed by Rambo in front of his deputies. And to him, that's all that matters is how he's perceived by the people in his town. He's the king of that town, and he's not just going to let some GI come in, embarrass him in front of everybody, and think that he's just going to walk off without any repercussions. So this vendetta that he has against Rambo is really what's the driving force because he he just cannot let it go. He will not allow himself to be embarrassed like that. So he wants to kill him for that very reason. And he's willing to let everybody else be sacrificed for that. And Colonel Troutman comes in again because he can't allow that to happen. And he's just trying to reel in Rambo. And meanwhile, Rambo's out there. He's a killing machine. But in this film, he doesn't really kill. You can argue that the one person he does kill is an accident and kind of had it coming. Because they build this guy up to be this deputy to be the biggest piece of shit in the movie. I'm to dislike you. 
really is, so you don't feel too bad when he dies. And, you know, you know the wind is blowing around, so it probably wouldn't have happened. Really, that's the only character that Rambo kills in this film, which is a big difference between every other Rambo film in the franchise. First Blood is really just like a leftover film from the 1970s, you know. In the 1970s, we had a lot of films like The Deer Hunter, Apocalypse Now, looking back on the Vietnam War and how the soldiers had to suffer in the war and when they first came back home from the war. And this film is a lot faster paced than those movies. This movie's only 93 minutes long. It's still a great character study of a soldier coming back from Vietnam and it's done phenomenally so well in this movie. It doesn't feel like the rest of the franchise which just becomes straightforward 80s action films. Rambo's a killing machine. He has no feelings and we don't really care about the character Rambo and when he went through anymore. We only really care about that character and his emotional battle in this film and it builds up to a great conclusion in this film and you can't take anything away from this movie other than the fact that it spawns in my opinion a ton of bad sequels but we'll always have the first Rambo film, we'll always have First Blood, which is definitely the best in the franchise, and in my opinion, is still Sylvester Stallone's best acting role. The monologue in the third act is amazing. It really shows that Sylvester Stallone can act. I did, I did, and I'm trying to pull him off, you know? And it's, it's my friend, it's all over me! But he just loves to do action films, and you know, if you're gonna put a gun to my head and say, hey, who do you like more, Arnold Schwarzenegger or Sylvester Stallone? Arnold Schwarzenegger wins that battle 10 out of 10 times for me. Stallone's really hit or miss. He even has some moments in this movie where I'm like seeing that overacting Stallone. But for the most part, he keeps it reeled in. He does a phenomenal job. I love this movie. I go back to this movie all the time. And for movies nowadays that are always three hours long for their character studies, it's really nice to go into one. And it's only 93 minutes long. And it doesn't feel like a moment is wasted. But anyway, guys, let's talk about this 4K Blu-ray from Studio Canal and Lionsgate. But before we do that, if you are a fan of 4K Blu-ray reviews, movie reviews, lists, podcasts, and shorts, we try and do them all here on the channel, and nothing will help this channel out more than by you just simply liking this video and subscribing to the channel. They drew first blood, not me. Look, Johnny, let me come in and get you the hell out of there. They drew first blood. Well, here it is, Rambo, First Blood. This 4K came out back in 2018, and I believe I only got it one year later on Black Friday for $5. And I remember being blown away by this 4K. I actually put it at number one on my most underrated 4K list because this 4K is always on sale, just like all the other Rambo 4Ks are always on sale. It actually came also in a really nice 4K steelbook collection with all the other Rambo films. Actually, Matt has that, if you guys remember Matt. It's really beautiful, and for me, when I got this, this was the 4K, the first 4K I remember just being blown away by. I was like, wow, this movie looks great on 4K. I couldn't believe it, like just seeing the reflections in the puddles. Brian Dennehy's police car, the red and blue sirens. I mean, it just looks so vibrant. And this only has HDR10. It doesn't even have Dolby Vision. It doesn't have Adobe Atmos track on it. All it's got is a DTS HD 5.1. Two disc set. I got it with a slip cover, so a really nice slip cover on here. You know, you pull it out, same artwork underneath. You go inside and you get a blu-ray and you get a 4k and all your extras are on that blu-ray disc and there's actually a good amount of extras on there i gotta be honest you know it's nothing that's gonna blow you away but you get a nice like 25 minute making of documentary and then you also get a nice little looking back on rambo in the 1980s documentary that one's only like 15 to 20 minutes and then you know you get some deleted scenes some outtakes trailers the stuff you would expect from a studio release and you know getting the blu-ray version which i'm pretty sure is just a compressed version of the 4k scan so that's pretty good because but they do both suffer from the same flaws and that's the one thing i want to bring up right away is this 4k hasn't aged as well as i had hoped now it's a five-year-old 4k to this point but for a 4k that i used to be blown away by i'll be honest re-watching it yesterday i was a little bit disappointed uh i didn't realize that it actually had these many flaws maybe it's just because technology has improved so much since 2018 when you go back and watch some 2017 2018 4ks you know when the technology was just coming into its fruition and you go and compare it to a 4k now like i just watched bruce lee's enter the dragon 4k and the two of these are night and day i mean this one has a hard time hitting those deep blacks it kind of has like this faded gray look and now there are a lot of scenes that are only lit by a candle so you could expect that to have a hard time hitting the deep blacks but i think our technology has increased to this point where modern day 4ks even modern day 4ks of taking 1970s and 1980s films to 4k they 
have a lot better time now hitting those deep blacks. You know, this can seem very grainy at points, but for the most part, not too, too grainy. But there are scenes where you'll notice that the grain does become a little bit overwhelming. It has this faded look throughout the entire 4K and on the Blu-ray. And the film itself, from what I always remember, always kind of had this faded color look. On the 4K, it kind of seems like it's fighting with itself. Like, it really does have a hard time. Like, it's a very scene-to-scene -scene basis where certain scenes, it does have this faded look. And then there's other scenes where the colors become just very vibrant. When it's raining outside and you get those puddles and you get Brian Dennehy's police car, that still looks great on 4K. But then there's scenes in the police station where it looks very faded, the opening scene to this movie. And that's supposed to look a little bit faded. They kind of go for this, like, little hazy effect. And that's always been like that from the very beginning. I saw this for the first time on VHS back in the day and then on DVD. So it's always looked like that in certain scenes. And I just remembered the 4K blowing me away. And maybe that's just because it's definitely a big upgrade over previous versions of this film. But for me now, I really think there's room for improvement, mainly when it comes to the visuals and also with the audio. The audio is solid. Like I said, it's crisp and clear. Um, the action scenes all sound great. This really would warrant a great Dolby Atmos track. I mean, the score to this movie is fantastic. I love the score to this film. This really would be a great film to upgrade to a Dolby Atmos track. And this was done by Studio Canal, who do some of the best transfers around. I think if they got their hands on this again and gave it a, you know, maybe just touch it up a little bit. That's all it needs. You know, it's still a great 4K. It just needs some touch-up work. Everything does. You know, you got your car after five years of that. You know, it needs new brakes. You know, touch up the paint because I know you've hit some stuff. I just hit a shopping cart in the parking lot yesterday. You know, these things happen. You got to get that fixed. So this 4K, I could use a little bit of work. If they ever decide to do a new scan of this film, I would be right there waiting for it. I love this film still to this day. I still think this is Sylvester Stallone's best film. This 4K is still really solid. And like I said, it always, always goes on sale. Like I, I grabbed this in 2019 for five bucks. I'm sure this Black Friday will be on sale around the same exact price. And it's definitely worth it for that price because it's still a great movie still a decent 4k might not be the best anymore but at the time it was a really really great 4k and it's one that you should have in your collection because it is one of the best films from the 1980s and it's probably one of the best films talking about the vietnam war and you just don't realize how good it is because it's also blended in with the entire rambo franchise which most people just think of over the top action and not realize that the first film is a fantastic character study so definitely check this one out and i highly can recommend this 4k especially if you can get it for that under $10 price point. So how would I rate this now in 2023? I would give this 4K Blu-ray still a solid 8 out of 10. Definitely grab this one if you can. But guys, it's also Friday, and that means it's time for our digital code giveaway. So we do this every single week here on the channel. On Friday's video, I'm going to ask you guys two digital code giveaway questions. All you have to do is answer one of those questions in the comment section below. And as long as you do that, you come back to Monday's video. This Monday, we're going to be reviewing Vacation on 4K. I'm going to put your name on a magic wheel. I'm going to spin that bad boy two times, and the two names it lands on, they have their choice of the digital codes that you see on your screen before you today. Then that is going to include Enter the Dragon and Vacation. But what are this week's two digital code giveaway questions? Well, we're talking about Sly Stallone, and I figured I'd ask you guys, what is your favorite Sylvester Stallone film? I already told you guys this is my favorite Sylvester Stallone film. I even like this more than Rocky. I know that might be a little sacrilege to say, but I told you guys I'm not the biggest Stallone guy. But First Blood speaks to me, and I've always been fascinated with the Vietnam War and how the veterans got treated coming back from the war. So this movie definitely speaks to me and what I'm interested in. I mean, I'm not, I'm not special in that matter. How many people have made movies looking back on the Vietnam War? Oliver Stone basically has a whole career built off of that. And, you know, rightfully so. He actually saw that stuff for real. And obviously his feelings show in many of his films, like Born on the Fourth of July and Platoon especially. You know, obviously I wasn't around then. I'm still very fascinated by it. And this movie, I think, is a fantastic character study. So Sylvester Stone Stallone's best film for me is this movie, but I want to hear what's your favorite Sylvester Stallone film. And then, um, since we're going to be talking about Vacation on Monday, I want to know what's your favorite 1980s comedy film? We don't really talk comedy too much here on the channel, but I'm a huge comedy fan. I'm really looking forward to that Vacation 4K and sharing that review with you guys. But what's your favorite 1980s comedy? And you guys just have to answer one of those questions in the comment section below. You don't got to answer both. And then after you guys are done leaving your comment in the comment section, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and then after you're done doing all of that, I want you guys to get out in those streets and tell your friends about us. We'll be seeing you around.